which is half guys talking about your favorite movies on your new favorite podcast and we're talking about the movie cast we have fun and we love our friends Hello, welcome to the second episode of the Halfcast Moviecast podcast. My name is Benny. I am a film person. Hi, I'm Julius. I am half Spanish, full Samoan. My name is Ravi, and boots on the moon. Boots on the moon. My name is Tom, and I have dry lips. Yeah, we're gonna get into this, starting with what movies we've watched in the past couple weeks. I'll start. I guess watched a movie called Starfish. Starfish is like this little indie weird film. It's like a sci-fi film, uh, on a super low budget, and um, yeah, it felt like kind of empty, but it was like <laughs> it was like an allegory for like uh, grief or something. But it was really like pretentious and and dumb. <laughs> it was like a two point five out of five for me. Did it have any starfish in the film, or was that just like a metaphor? No starfish, no starfish, um, just a girl. Ooh. Just a girl in a desert, deserted town, and she sees some apparitions and aliens, and it, I'm pretty sure the budget is, like, like in the hundreds of thousands. It's a very, very small film, uh, kind of surreal, uh, interesting little film. Wow. Uh, but actually, it wasn't very interesting, because, like, emotionally, people were, like, saying stuff that didn't really... Uh, adhere to their character like i think uh, here's a here's a quote we're just people r- wandering around bumping into each other and then a character mm. out of nowhere no no we aren't this sounds very similar to fan four stick my movie for the week is starfish <laughs> but the thing about this that kind of redeemed it above the fan four stick level was that it was like um it had some truly like surreal visual moments and i really wish that it was like backed with some solid narrative it was kind of like if you think of films like the babadook or under the skin or even mother they're like if you know if anyone has watched any of those films they're sort of like yeah. surreal alien like representations of someone's inner life like a this girl she's going through this kind of stuff she lost somebody and she's just trying to get over it so that was what this one was like but it right. like it didn't deliver on the level that the babadook delivered because it's just its message was muzzled muddled it was just trying to yeah it was just trying to deliver and it just didn't <laughs> so starfish in a sense was more like a, a, was i guess a name inscribed to the alien type of creatures in this film i don't know actual... i can't remember <laughs> <laughs> sounds like it wasn't a memorable film it was memorable but like it was like it was just it wasn't that like good <laughs> That's all, and it had this. Mo- I know. I don't think any of you will watch it, so I'm just gonna spoil a little moment. It had this moment where she kind of transcends outside the film, and then she like oh. holds the little blocky thing, you know, the little thing, yeah. and she like goes, "Huh, I'm in a film," and then she starts walking out, and there's like oh, people wow. discussing her film, and then she's like, "Whoa!" and then she's back in the film again, and then she's animated. It was all this weird kind of textural stuff that was like, okay, that's like interesting, but no, yeah, that sounds interesting. Sounds creative. It could have been a highlight if it made sense. <laughs> ah, yes. So she's secretly Deadpool. Yeah, but like even Deadpool is like funny and like pokes fun <laughs> at the and the character was got something going for him. Eh? Yeah, like the character, like a character of Deadpool has sense, but this one it was also quite. It could be like criticized as quite slow. It had like an IMDb rating of five point something because I think the oh. main thing people said is like nothing happened, which is kind of true. I mean. <laughs> I see. And and something could have happened inside her like heart or something, but it just wasn't like conveyed very uh consistently. So I see. That's Starfish. Mm-hmm. It's a movie that I wouldn't recommend. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who the director was for that film? Probably some first time indie director, not not anyone well known. Oh, okay. But they right. probably would have like um potential if they got a different writer to write this stuff i think because i think the writing was a major thing that kind of held the film back hmm. i'm just asking on um, curiosity because i know a lot of these indie directors can get picked up for like big blockbusters like we, we see the case with marvel and like these big studios who take these low budget indie directors that make 
movies that aren't that great, so you never know that my that guy might end up or lady might end up in a big blockbuster potentially. Some, that could something. absolutely definitely happen um, with this director. Like the thing was, it was like Monsters or something. If you've seen Monsters, because the director of Monsters was like it was like a low budget film about monsters and it had really good effects and stuff, but it was like super low budget. But they managed to get it over the line and have like good effects. Um, right. And then they got him to do Rogue One, so it, it could definitely happen. Wow. Um, so, yeah, that was the film. director of Rogue One. Gareth Edwards? Yeah, yeah. Um, True. Um, I've been watching, um, not that much because I don't have that much time, but I've been watching, I watched a movie called Becky. Um, I started The Five Bloods. Oosh. Finished watching What We Do in the Shadows. Finished Defending Jacob. Finished, oh, should I carry on or? Because I wow. didn't have that much time, so I just I didn't watch that much. You're doing quite a bit in your ten minutes, surely. Yes, I mean you've watched yeah, way more I than I. Got, I only got ten minutes, so you know I gotta I have to only watch a few things. Right. And then there were like I got three other movies that I've seen during the last weeks. Oh so, my yeah, goodness. Not that much, you know. Nice. The highlights was definitely what we do in the shadows. Uh, season finale was just this past week. It is quite possibly one of my favorite seasons of comedy I've seen. It's Every episode is incredible. Uh, the writing is amazing. The world building is great. Character characters. Every every character has their own story arc throughout the whole season. It's just it's amazingly written. Shout outs to my homeboy Jermaine. Wait, so did you say it it wasn't like your 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 favorite season or was? No, it's, uh, it's probably up there as one of my favorites comedy seasons in TV history. It'll probably it'll probably be up there with um, Shortland Street, you know those good comedy seasons. Um, yeah, Coronation gotcha. Street. Uh, mm, what's the other mm, good mm. comedy? Um, those are very good. Like they they prison got... prison break. There's a new season of Prison Break coming out, eh? Yeah, it's a, it's a good comedy, bro. You should watch it. It's just a bit yeah, yeah, it's quite funny. Did they just like keep breaking out of prison every season or something? Like they get, they break out a season and then they go into prison. Oh, okay. Ah. Uh... There's always a bigger prison. They get, they always get caught. There must be bad criminals. So what we do in the shadows um, was that um, was the season finale probably the best one that you've seen so far in terms of all three seasons or all two seasons. There's only two. Se- yeah, there's two seasons. It's it's definitely better than the first one. Um, a lot of what I read on Twitter is a lot of people. It's it really is adored. I've been watching it during the you know the pandemic and. I think it's amazing. It's I, I can't wait for Emmy season because if it doesn't win anything, I'm I'm quitting Hollywood and I'm going to build a farm. You're quitting your high paying position in Hollywood as one of the producers. I want to go raise some ducks and name them after every character from what we do in the shadows, yeah. and then kill them and eat them. This oh, is yum. a good plan that you have going on here. I'll bring all of you guys over for dinners. Barbecue dinner. Also, just another thing I recommend the movie that I've seen is Becky. It's <laughs> Um, I went in there not knowing anything about it. It stars Kevin James, you know, that comedian. Um, I don't forgot what the girl's name is. Um, Becky. Yep. Her, <laughs> <laughs> Becky, Lily yeah, Wilson. Becky. Sounds about um, right. Joe, yeah. McHale, Joe McHale, you know, that comedian, that tall, musty guy. It is quite, like, there was a sequence in that film where, I, like, I was, I was trying to catch my breath. Like, for 45 seconds, I was like, oh, my, oh, my Josh. It, it was... Mm. Because I didn't know what it was, and I didn't see the trailer, and I, I wasn't intending to watch it, and I just saw it on, you know, on the illegal website, and but, so I went and watched it, and then now I'm like, man, people need to watch this just to see how crazy it is. <laughs> I feel like I've heard about that movie, but like not known what it was too much about. So it, it is a comedy, would you say, with Kevin James? No, or... I think it's a thriller, action, drama. Well, for Kevin James, extremely movie. violent. Yeah, it is. Oh my gosh, it's violent. Oh my gosh. It is kind of the big, it seems like the big gimmick about this movie is that uh, Kevin James is playing a serious role uh, as a, like, you know, in a horror film. I didn't even know it was him on the screen when I pressed play on the illegal website I watched it on. The picture of him, it was a big guy with a beard and I thought, oh, I've never seen this act child before. So I pressed play and then I realized it was him and I was like, oh, this is going to suck. (laughs) <laughs> then I watched it. I was like, "Oh, okay." How many How many times did he fall over in the film? <laughs> I think he fell over on a desk once when he was trying to pull his pants up. 
a series. <laughs> oh, that's uh, you, you need one, at least one of those in every. You need at least James one of those, film. you know. Mm, yeah. yeah. Let's see. Um, do you reckon he's doing like Adam Sandler with doing like a serious role, or? I mean, they're actors. Just because they're being in like comedies, like look at Robin Williams. He st- he started off in Juilliard as an actor, but hmm. he went off and did comedy. But he did just yeah, you know, a lot of people. Wait, what are we talking about? I think you need to hit a bit with, big with the right director um, in order to like uh, get a role that's not just like hashtag serious, but something that's like actually uh, it, you can actually exceed excel in and i mean some actors are always a little bit better than others but um yeah i mean i don't know if kevin james has it within him to get an oscar winning performance yeah, but, I don't think so. but like um yeah. for the case with adam sandler i feel like he's always had it in him uh he just always produced he was always starring in films that were just like glorified holidays hmm. Because I've because I feel like we've seen that with a lot of comedians, like we you know with the likes of Steve Carell, how he's gone and done like movies as opposed to comedies, and you know Adam Sandler did it before, and now Kevin James. So I feel like it's like a I don't know if it's a trend, but like I, I guess I guess actors and I wanted to do a lot more than just you know hey I'm just that guy that falls over. It's like oh I can actually <laughs> do a serious role. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely I think so. And um, what's it called? And sometimes it doesn't pay off. I mean, look at some of Jim Carrey's serious films. Like uh, I think is it sunshine? No, not sunshine. Eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. Um, that was, I mean, in my mind, that's one where oh, wait, it really, that was great. It was where it did really did pay off. But um, what's the one with the numbers? <laughs> Jim Carrey, uh, number twenty three. Jim Carrey that's is one, one of those cases where he's had like really good dramatic roles, like yeah. yeah, like in Eternal Sunshine and The Truman Show, and then some really terrible ones, uh, <laughs> like number twenty three. Yeah, like the number twenty three. Yeah. So it sort it's, of depends on the project too. Yeah. It's a film where he sees the number 23 and everything. Um, and it might sound funny. and I mean, like, like an actual... Sounds like a comedy. It might sound creative in concept, but it's just uh, executed oh, yeah, really badly. Just... Um, I actually wanted to talk about um, The Five Bloods. Oh, maybe we should uh, talk about that next week. I think we should talk about that next week. Is because... that... Oh, okay. Is that your... Oh, sorry, my bad. I was, going to, <laughs> I was going to bring it up that it's something where we should yeah. watch, but we'll, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll exercise well, we can discuss a little that bit. That's okay, I'll bring it up as something we should watch. Yeah, sure, uh, sure, sure. I'll exercise a little bit of discretion about that one. Uh, but yes, um, I, I've just seen that all over Letterboxd, but we'll, we'll, we'll kind of uh, transition from that. <laughs> yeah. Is that a movie or is that a... Um... Yeah, Spider is yeah. a movie on Netflix. Uh, oh, true. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, Ravi. Your Black Panther's in it. Mm. True. We'll, talk, oh, we'll talk about it later. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Michael Jordan. Oh, what? Ravi, Ravi, what have <laughs> you been Jordan. watching? Um, so I've been watching a show on Netflix. Uh, it came out quite recently. I think it's maybe a week or two weeks um, since it released. Uh, Space Force, uh, co created by Greg Daniels, who did The Office as well as um, Steve Carroll. And um, yeah, no, this, this, this was my first show after finishing The Office kind of like an office vibe show but i think it's completely different um i'm not sure if you guys have seen it i think maybe julie's it's a good a way episodes. to like it's a good yeah, way for, i watched half it's a good way for ravi to kind of uh de-escalate from the the, the yeah. sadness of the office yeah. finale that he had to uh, <laughs> abandon his show so space force is like a what do you call it like the 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 kind of uh the, the the what's the opposite of a gateway drug yeah that's like, exactly what i was thinking yeah i was like i don't know rehab <laughs> maybe <laughs> like what? yeah something to like ease you out of the uh, yeah. experience it's a gateway like, back the into office. the real world <laughs> oh, sorry from from office heaven you know? and you can sprinkle yeah. a little bit of upload on there as well um but yeah no the um the space force is um it's not the office for those that, those that are keen to watch it, um, I mean, it's created by the people that did The Office and you know Steve Carell's back for the first time with comedy and a TV show. But um, it's uh, I liked it. I mean, I I didn't love it, uh, but I feel like there should be a second season. And I heard this with a lot of people because it's not getting the best reviews from the critics and the fans are kind of like living it. But um, people were saying that normally with Greg Daniels, um, his first season for all his shows aren't that great. So they're like, hey, you know, because I heard stories about The Office, how they were like fighting to keep that show on because right. it wasn't getting great reviews and critics weren't loving it. So I, I feel like it might be the same situation with Space Force. But I mean, it's a good it's a good show. It's just not great. Um, so what do you think, Julius? I mean, you've been halfway through it now. 
Yeah, I think we talked about it in our last one. I, I did, if I'm being honest, I did go in with trepidations only because when it comes to the way I see funny, mundane comedy stuff like this, mockumentaries, it, I think it's always better when it's low budget and when the cast is unknown. Look what happened with Flight of the Concords when they did their most previous show and they tried to fill out big stadiums when they're better off in small, intimate spaces and that's just the way they perform it. When they did it in massive stadiums, it just felt they couldn't fill that space and I, that was kind of the trepidation I had with Space Force. But if I'm being honest, I, I enjoy like I found myself laughing with so much I think yeah. the interactions between some of the characters are some of the best. John Markovich's character and Steve Carell, I think that's the highlight for me. Like if yeah. there was a show with just them two, just polar opposites, but the way they they communicate and interact, it's just funny to me. It's the, it's like how I interact with my with my f- friends. Other personalities, eh? yeah, other personalities. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, um, Space Force, would would you guys be considering to watch it, I guess, uh, Tom and Benny? Is that something that you guys Yeah, I'd, I'd probably watch it, eh? Um, I watched The Office ages ago, so I didn't I didn't feel the pull so quickly to jump on it. And because of what I'm, I'm already, like, watching stuff at the moment. But yeah, I hope what you say is true, and, like, the story just gets, like, better and better as it goes on. Because that'd be really cool, and I I want another show like that. Space Force is probably low on my list. At the moment, I'm going through um, The Leftovers, and I'm probably going Ooh. to watch The Last Dance soon. So, All right. Oh, it, my Josh. Has anyone... Who is, who's watched The Last Dance? I'm putting my hand up if no one can see me on Zoom. Oh, I we can't, don't no. believe I have. It is... Um, oh, sorry. I won't, I won't spoil it for you. But it's about um, soccer. Yeah. Uh, it's about Michael Michael Jordan... The soccer man, the soccer player, uh, Michael B. Jordan, the soccer player for the um, Wellington Phoenix, um, (laughs) his rise to glory. Oh, come on, guys. Is this actually about uh, the Phoenix? How the Wellington Phoenix won the Olympics, um, the worldwide Olympics uh, in in Spain. It it follows um, Michael Jordan in his last season of the Bulls and all the drama that happened leading up to it and and where they go after wow well after all this time i mean the, the thing that doesn't make sense to me is why they let the bulls out of the zoo rampage into the city <laughs> the chicago bulls mm, and that's yeah. always kind of confused me why every time they have a game they'll let all the bulls in the zoo yep. just rampage through the city the chicago bulls yeah. just just destroying but anyway I'm so um, confused did they actually let the bulls out? Or are we talking metaphorical fans? <laughs> no, they did. They did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they did it it's once. Historical. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's a mini series. Uh, I think it's all done now, though, so you can watch it all in one go. Just, just one last thing on Space Force. Um, I didn't like that it was all released at once. I would have preferred it to be like a weekly release. I think similar to like something like Titans or DC. I think Ravi's oh. cutting out a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we've got, um, and there's also upload as well, which I mentioned last week, which is by uh, Mike. Sh- Mike Sure. No, I think I can't remember who did it. It's one of the office guys as well. Um, Tom, what have you been watching? Sorry, oh, Ravi's been man. cutting out. Oh, there's Ravi's back. Kind is of. Is he back? It's a ghost of Ravi. We'll go ahead without him anyway. Yeah. I think he, it looks so, like um, he's blankly <laughs> staring into yeah. the distance. He's like <laughs> what happened? deep in thought. Oh, His I Zoom hope that chat is kind of good. frozen for the audio <laughs> listeners. Um, sorry, Ravi, you might have to uh, hey, we'll have rejoin to or something. <laughs> um, I've been watching Vikings still. I finished season five. That's a lot of effort. Yeah. I'm I'm all the way up to season five, so there's half of season six to go, um, and then the other half I will be up to date and watching it in time with everybody, so I can pretend I was here the whole time, you know, <laughs> kind of like how I did when I watched like the first four seasons of Game of Thrones, like all in one go. Well, not mm. one go because it's a lot of time. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Vikings, not not bad. I, it's, can I, I ask you a sincere question? Yes. Did you cry? I cried with season five, episode ten. Okay. More so than season four sixteen? I didn't cry for a good reason. I didn't like it. It was what? my low light of the entire series. 
<laughs> we need to discuss this uh, yeah, yeah. after this, brother. But imagine, like, they build this massive fight up for, like, so long, and then they're just like, yeah, we're going to have this fight. And then they have the fight, and they do, like, two seconds of fight, and they're like, now let's cut to two minutes of story behind what these people were doing this morning. And you do the two minutes, and then they, like, go back to the fight. Another two seconds of fighting, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's go back and watch someone else for two minutes this morning. (laughs) And I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, but they just did that for the whole fight. The whole fight. And I was like, yeah, Game of Thrones was the last TV series I really got into. And their their fights are are great. And I was thinking this would be like the Battle of the Bastards in this one. Battle of the Bastards, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. You can just watch it on its own. It's a great episode. And it's no, like... Don't you mean the uh, Battle of All Cops? <laughs> <laughs> yep, that is what it is. <laughs> well, wow. and I guess we wow. know where our podcast stands. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to see a fight, but uh, no fight. It sounds like a Batman v Superman, how everyone was expecting this fight of the century, and then um, <laughs> all you got was two hours of Superman being sad and Batman killing everyone oh i was expecting uh, a good, good movie <laughs> fun fact a good one not a great one no, a good one that movie should have went straight to audio <laughs> straight to audio yes yeah that I movie never, should have went straight to audio i never watched it because i heard like people talk about it for like a couple oh. weeks after it came out and i was like i don't want to see that i want to ruin my batman and ruin my superman i'll just i'll just pretend they're still great Anything else you watch apart from Vikings? No, actually, it took a lot of time. There's 20 episodes in four and season four and five, and yeah, so that's that's like 10 hours each. Mm-hmm. But I've got a life. I've still got a life. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We've all got, we've all got wide and varied lives with a yeah. bunch of stuff going on. Yeah, I do. I went outside this week. I think uh, we're done with our movie section, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're gonna move on to some news articles that I kind of pulled up from Reddit. Um, new Netflix movie, The Last Days of American Crime, lands infamous zero percent rating on Rotten Tomatoes. We should watch that this week. <laughs> yeah, we should watch. How much that. is on? How much is the rating? Zero percent on oh. Rotten Tomatoes. Well, like you can see that by the trailer. <laughs> that is bad. What What is that movie or show about? Is it's about a bank robber? Who- Joins to commit like the last final. Uh, um, so, so yeah, oh, well, from the trailer I watched, it's just this criminal who joined, or this bank robber who joined these people for this historical like heist, and that's all it, it got to me. And I just remember thinking, I've seen that before, don't need to watch it again. <laughs> Do we know if anyone features in it that's quite big, or is it just like some random actor? Edgar Ramirez. I only know him from. Um, from uh, Narcos. Not oh, well. I like Narcos. I need to watch that one. Um, next news headline: Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse sequel production underway ahead of 2022 release. Yes. Very yes. exciting. Yeah. Very exciting. I loved the first we, one. We need it was one great. Those. Who's distributing that? Marvel or Sony? Sony, I believe. Sony owns that baby. Um, so, all oh, right. Okay. And I believe that they're doing, they're planning on doing some spin-off TV shows because um, Sony owns like the the rights to animated TV shows, I believe, or something like that. So maybe we could get more from the set, like the like the small like not small characters, but maybe more from the characters in it. Um, yeah, so that's exciting. I, I'm really looking forward to it. Mm. Um, specific to our New Zealand experience, this one go this one cuts nice nicely. Um, James Cameron goes into 14-day New Zealand government supervised quarantine before Avatar 2 restarts filming and is still confident of meeting the December 2021 release date. Mm. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, Avatar 2. 2, 3, 4, 5. 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 27, 82. Might as well be. Why not make it a TV series? Come on. <laughs> um, but it's, it's a prequel, right? I think we discussed this. The second Avatar is going to no, be a prequel. No, it's a sequel. It's a sequel. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so apparently, apparently it's about Neytiri and Jake Sully. They have a child, and then they're forced to go to another moon of Pandora. I only know this because I used to... I watched this film like eight times. I, I loved it so much. Wow. 
then mm-hmm. when I heard there was sequels, I was like, nah, I don't need it. <laughs> Blue Man, Blue Man but I watched the Hunters. description, and um, yeah, it's just about them going to a new place where there's so much water. And the description actually says they spend a lot of time in water. Oh. Beanie, you put up like a photo in our, in our group chat about them like being in some kind of water setting. Yeah. <laughs> like, <behind the> <laughs> That's why right, I look ugly ass. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog sequel officially in the works at Paramount. Director Jeff Fowler and writer Pat, Pat Casey returning. I still gotta watch the the first one. I've I, seen I it. It was, it was surprisingly fun. Yeah, that's what I've heard. James Marsden was great. Oh, Jim Carrey stole the show for me. It's like watching old Jim Carrey. Ooh. Nice. There were scenes where he was like talking to a cop or to an army guy, and he wouldn't let the army guy talk. But every time he said something, I just was like, man, that guy's funny. Well, what's his name? <laughs> Um, Ari Aster, uh, director of Hereditary. Midsummer and Hereditary, yeah, uh, discusses his next project, describes it as a four-hour nightmare comedy. Yes, I read this and I was, I was like, whoa, a nightmare. four-hour horror comedy. I'm like, oh my um, goodness. I'll probably watch this when I'm in, asleep. Yeah, that's how we make it a nightmare comedy. Yeah, see? See what I did there? Yeah, good job. It's quite funny. Thanks, I mean, uh, horror and comedy always go fantastically together. Um, yeah. And even Midsummer and Hereditary, for how hor- horrifying they are, they do. horror always has this sort of absurd quality to it that it's like a little bit comedic in a sense, a little bit funny. And I think they go well together because our sort of, oh, that's gross kind of reaction goes well with, ha, 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 I'm scared. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So they go really <laughs> well together. Um, as long as as long as he's putting Florence Pugh back in there, I'm, I'm, in, the front, I'm in the front of the row. Uh, director Taika Waititi of What We Do in the Shadows and Thor Ragnarok awarded New oh, Zealand's Order that, of yeah. Merit for his contributions to film and television. Well deserving, yeah, absolutely. I. It's good because uh, he he only accepted it because his peers nominated him for. It. Wow. Yeah, and in, in, in true um, over humble New New Zealand style. <laughs> like he wouldn't have put his name forward, but because everyone else did, he was like, might as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay then. John Malkovich initially thought being John Malkovich should have been being Tom Cruise. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wow! I see. <laughs> I see. I mean, Sorry, that it, it would have been a cut. totally interesting <laughs> and Louise. weird headline. That's what he said. Apparently, he said he thought it should have been being Tom Cruise. Wait, him playing At Tom first. Cruise, or like Tom Cruise in, in a movie where it's called Being Tom Cruise? Tom Cruise in the movie as he he, he basically said when probably if, when it was pitched to him as being John Malkovich, he's like, I I thought it should have been being Tom Cruise instead, and Tom Cruise. Right. As, as yeah, it's a role. movie called Being John Malkovich, starring John Malkovich. I've seen and, the poster uh, for it. Everyone's like got a cut-out image of John yeah, Malkovich's face. It yeah, it's about a puppeteer. So, um, oh man, you should watch it. Gee, it's pretty. It's pretty weird. It came out in the like late nineties, right? Or was it yeah, early ninety nine? I think. Yeah, ninety nine, ninety eight. I really enjoyed the film, obviously, because it's written by one of my favorite writers, Charlie Kaufman. Uh, he's, yeah, he's directed an by Spike. Writer. Directed by Spike Jones, yeah. Uh, mm. He's he's really awesome, and he did his own uh, Charlie Kaufman esque film in Her uh, when he directed yes, and written that's Her. Right. Hmm. Um, new cool. headline Atlantis The Last Empire co director Kirk Wise reveals details of proposed sequel. Is that the, is that the sequels to the first two animated Atlantises? Is there two animated Atlantises? Yeah, I remember the one, the first one with Milo, and then the second one was Milo's kid with the Atlantean lady. Is that one of those Lion King one and a half type? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's right. So the first one, oh, right. yeah. Atlantis it, number one, and then Atlantis one point five. The one that nobody really knows about, but it yeah. just went straight to DVD I what or it's something. Called. It was the first one was Lost Empire, and the second one he returned for some reason, but I don't know. Oh, is the first one lost, lost Empire? Oh, okay. The last year. Um, and uh, new headline, The Room, Tommy Wiseau says Netflix turned down the opportunity to stream his film. Oh, <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Damn. Netflix doesn't want Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> <laughs> no, poor dude. That would have been a good, like, it would have got a lot of views, I think. It you should have got James been. Franco to go and pitch it. 
<laughs> exactly. Is the disaster artist on Netflix? I don't yeah, know. That's good. I liked, I liked it. it. Yeah. Yeah, I liked it. I laughed. <laughs> so I thought it was very I actually funny. laughed. I'm not normally laughing in films. I thought it was funny, but also like it had a nice, an interesting emotional core to it because I felt it like actually kind of uh, accurately portrayed Tommy Wiseau and it is like, <laughs> yeah. it's sort of like. Uh, Someone actually trying his best. Yeah, right. yeah. It had a kind of, if you've ever seen or heard of the film Ed Wood by Tim Burton, it had that sort right. of uh, quality oh, yes. of a of a guy just trying his best to make this yeah. film and he's actually got a massive ambition but he just has so many blind spots and it just turns out in some hilarious <laughs> yeah. like mistreating yeah. cr- crew That's members great. and <laughs> yeah i just saw it. it is on netflix so go check it out if you're listening yeah and it's got or both the franco yeah it's got both the franco brothers right david great, hey? james yeah yeah david and harry it's real good yeah Two. harry and william Who's harry harry and, and william yeah huh? franco <laughs> Oh, sorry. And our last headline, California says film and TV production can resume as early as June twelfth, which oh, is my gosh. awesome. That's can we talk about this? The past. That's great. Can we talk about this? Yeah, sure. Yes, go for it. So um oh well not not really much to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, other news. than the fact can we talk about this? Other though? than the fact that um the first movie to probably re- be released globally is tenant that's great. and that yeah and that nolan's risk paid off when everyone was telling him to move from july 17th mm. the man stayed there and like it's just crazy to think that our first movie back in theaters is tenant which could possibly be one of the best movies ever yeah i'm beyond putting <laughs> expectations bring it like but for, you know for any other movie it could just be like rational but this is nolan guys Come yeah. on. are like, we absolutely the... sure that um u.s cinemas are going to be open by the time that tenet comes out yeah AM, amc theaters are expected to be fully opened globally just in time for tenet um deadline broke the news um they're reporting amc is trying to do it as fast as they can because they suffered 2.2 billion loss during wow. the shutdown and so you know they're projecting an opening weekend box office of around forty to sixty million. It probably won't hit the one billion mark only because. I mean, like if it's the first movie to come out in the world, I mean, like we've got something similar. I mean, I don't know if it's as big uh, when it comes to internationally, but like New Zealand's like the first um, country to do rugby like officially like a competition, and they they're getting like like massive crowds. So I feel like if it's the first film ever like to come out globally, it's going to get like massive like you mm. know. Um, box office money because everyone's going to want to see the first movie after lockdown so yeah, yeah. i read I a thread on twitter and on new zealand film twitter um if that's a thing it's like a little circle of new <laughs> zealand uh that it was an opinion saying that because of like the worldwide kind of uh reluctance to release films at this time but new zealand is sort of out of the whole uh lockdown thing at the moment this could be the perfect time to create a bubble of New Zealand film of like creating like for cinemas to release and promote New Zealand films because other films aren't really being released right now. So you might as well like use this time to promote and, and screen New Zealand films and create some sort of like creative bubble, like to promote New Zealand film and help it out a little yeah. bit because that'd be great it needs yeah. the, the only help, thing is a know? lot of studios are already booking out so many dates already wonder mm-hmm. woman is in august dune is in mid-december so mm-hmm. a lot of the tempo you know the big studio tempo films that are coming out i think a lot of them are being thing it's just the indie films that haven't been released so mm-hmm. I, I i think that's a great idea the Absolutely. thing about those tempo films that confuses me is that i i always get confused by the fact that they always want to screen it inside a tent with a big pool <laughs> Yeah. It's so like yeah. a pole gets in the way when you're trying to yeah. screen, like, right in the middle, eh? yeah. Right yeah. In the middle. Yeah. why i like why are tent pole films still a thing the tent pole is right in the middle it blocks your view of like one third of like one i think if somebody knew how to speak polish they can just ask him yeah well uh-huh. there's also a pole there there's also yeah. a polish man a pole yeah, yeah the pole has many names like martha <laughs> uh, um, magic mike yeah like like names that we we, we don't want to say because they ruin film. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nah. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. can I add one more news, uh, Binti? One news, go. Comic Con at home. Um, Comic Con is sitting free virtual at home edition. 
from Wednesday 22nd of July through to Sunday July 26th, you can watch whatever panel or um, what's it called or whatever whatever gaming or stuff they have on. Mm. It will be all available. Badges will be available to print. Wow. So basically, all of San Diego Comic Con events will be free to anyone who joined online. Amazing. Can we still cosplay? You can if you want, but mm, I finally get to technically take something off my bucket list. Is this just like a, a series of Zoom meetings? No. Yeah. Sorry? Is this just like a series of Zoom meetings? Mm. Yeah. Um, do we know if any of the big studios are going to be present, or is it just going to be Warner like... Brothers has Warner Brothers has a um has a day. I nice. think the major ones Warner Brothers is wanting to do a lot of DC stuff. Awesome. But if they if they get M- the MCU, if they get Disney, then I think they're awesome. fighting for Disney. I don't think Disney's confirmed yet, but yeah. that'll be massive if yeah. they get Disney. Absolutely, yeah. Because you get things like Lucas Films. Oh, we, oh, we actually man. don't have much to. Pro- like you know to talk about at the moment but you Apart know from mandalorian but... season two yes oh sorry i forgot about that i forgot nothing about going that. On. Yes. nothing at all nothing going on nothing, nothing important i totally forgot about that my bad but that's <laughs> massive man that that's is massive. your bad yeah yeah we could um, all come together at tom's house or benny's house and watch it that'll be great actually i have a oh, whole man. level at my house that is mine now so let's do it we oh. could we yeah. could all dress up as well we can do comic-con we can cosplay yeah oh my gosh my dream's coming true uh our movie this week was chosen this week this fortnight was chosen by ravi what is our movie drum roll please i know we don't have a drum to roll with um but this movie um i first heard of it from collider video shout out to collider video they did this thing a couple years ago called it um they called it the top 50 comic book superhero movies sorry top 50 superhero movies of all time they did like a ranking system amongst their like like personalities and stuff like that but they did an honorable mentions list and um some of these movies i didn't hear, hear of um one of them was super and they're like james gunn directed this film I'm like wait james gunn the guy that did the guardians of the galaxy one and two the guy that's going to do the third guardians of the galaxy and the suicide squad he did this movie and um it stars um ryan wilson who's from the office um as well as rain Liv- wilson rain yeah rain wilson what did, it, what did I say? Ryan? Rain like the rain. <laughs> who's who's Ryan Wilson? Uh, Rain Wilson, uh, Liv Tyler, uh, Kevin Bacon, Nathan Villian. Um, yeah, this is a movie for this week by James Gunn. Um, what did you guys think of this? Wow. <laughs> Shut up, crime. Don't steal. Don't deal drugs. Don't molest kids. Face the wrath of the Crimson Bolt. Yeah. But seeing it, I was, I've seen it before, so right. I'll go first and then I'll shut up. Um, <laughs> I remember watching it in high school. I, oh, I remember hearing about it because it was being made the same time as Kick Srot. Mm. But I remember watching Kick Srot first. Sorry, yeah, I'll that's say how it you say it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, yeah. I remember watching the New Zealand Kick-Ass version first. of the. And I remember watching um, Kick Ass first, and it left a massive impression on me. I still have the DVDs I brought. Wow. I still. Um and my yeah I I it's I really loved the 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 kick ass movies and um I just remember watching it and then I went and watched um Super and I just was thinking uh oh, it was just a rip off and I remember leaving the film like oh, not liking it at all right but I'm glad I got to rewatch it now without you know the whole kick ass package or mm. baggage right. um I I would just say that I like it more now than I did before I can appreciate the work but awesome I wouldn't watch it again. <laughs> I like it more than kick Wow. Um, <clears throat> okay. I, I think I've, I very highly underestimated this film. People who generally don't like it too much. Um, and certainly during the first 30 minutes, I was like, what am I watching? This is really um, obscene. It seems to glorify like the incel lifestyle. If you've ever, <laughs> if you've ever encountered that online where just someone uh, constantly doesn't get the reasons why they are mistreating like, or, or misunderstanding women and all this kind of stuff. Mm. And, uh, but from like the 30 minute point onwards, I started to kind of understand what the film was doing. Um, right. And it was sort of subtle, like, and then it became less and less subtle over time, the actual message of the movie. And I think the main thing was that, um, you know, in superhero films, we're just kind of like defaulting to believing that all the main characters' actions are like condonable, uh, mm. things that we can excuse away, um, 
but oftentimes in this film, the main characters are screwed up. <laughs> they, <laughs> they act in like really reprehensible ways. They like, uh, especially the the like sidekick character yeah. played by Ellen Page. She just goes yeah. crazy in this film. <laughs> And um, yeah, yeah, it's like I, I, it's just like foul. It was like about what happens when we see things too much in black and white, um, wow. and the lack of ambiguity when everything's someone's fault. We have to get angry. Um, and Frank, and I, there was also like a film about like breakups and stuff. I felt sure. as well, like the sure. whole thing. Um, and I was just like many spoilers, but um, it, yeah, it was sort of like about a breakup. Um. And I just felt like it was really cool in that way. Yes. Yeah. Really cool presentation. Nice. Yeah, I um, quite liked so, it as well, eh? It was, it was pretty good. Awesome, man. Um, so for those like? that don't know what this movie is about, quick synopsis from INDB. After his wife falls under the influence of a drug dealer, an everyday guy transforms himself into Crimson Bolt, a superhero with the best intentions but lacking in super... Uh, lacking in heroic skills um i think that this movie is not necessarily a superhero movie but it's more like a, of a vigil anti kind of film um uh, like it like i said i would never seen anything from james gunn apart from the big marvel movies but um i would say don't take your kids to this movie or like show your kids. this is not a this is not a kids movie okay this is like a r-rated and it's r-rated <clears throat> specifically for a reason um but i was looking through the catalog of james gunn like back in the day and um a lot of his stuff was like really weird like, yeah. I think before this, I think Julius, he told me he did the movie called Slither. Yeah. Like he that also was... used to work in Troma. I don't know what that is. but um... oh, sorry. Carry on. Wait, but, I do yeah. want to hear. What is that, Julius? What is Troma? Troma is it's like a important. horror house, like sort of A24, but they specialize in gory horror films. That's where he became a sort of writer, director for like films like Tromeo and Juliet, which I remember watching in high school only because the poster was in my drama class. And I remember watching it thinking, oh, I love Shakespeare. Nick Minute. Yep. <laughs> so it was like a like a <clears throat> horror version? Oh, like, it's a lesbian right? version. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and uh, it, it, they, they say like Troma is like, it's by Lloyd. It's a, It was created by a man named Lloyd lloyd kaufman based on like fast parody gore and splatter it mm. kind of reminds me a little bit of peter jackson's origins where he yeah. made like um what's, what's those films like? and stuff yeah he made like splatter films he just would get a rugby team and like i remember yeah, he like he like got a rugby team together and got them to act out his film what's that one where they got the alien guy with the middle finger um oh flip forgot peter jackson film anyway he, it reminds me of that kind of aesthetic mm. And um, yeah, no, uh, I think one of the things <clears throat> I, I thought of off, off the bat was this is a dark, violent, um, you know, a, and totally. a comedic at the same time. Like it has like <laughs> like like all of a sudden like it's it's like really dark and gruesome, but then you get comedic elements. Uh, uh, off, off the bat, I thought that was really cool um, how they did like the like they had like like comic book kind of style to it like like the opening title scene how they how all the characters like dancing and singing together that was such a long yeah. opening scene <laughs> <laughs> oh, it yeah, was that's... so random i though, didn't like cause... that <laughs> <laughs> i thought, was like, I thought... Is... Oh, sorry i thought it took a little while for this film to get off the ground Definitely. to be honest yeah but yeah. i mean i mean i just thought it was too quirky for the sake of quirky to start off with Right. But I think yeah. I was quite um, impressed by what it turned into in the end. Nice. Yeah, I have heaps of negatives of this film, but um, <laughs> well, some of the stuff the... I did like, I liked Frank. I thought yeah. Rain Wilson did an awesome performance. He kind of blended this sort of emotional dude, but like he was completely unhinged. <laughs> like he was, <laughs> he was a crazy basket. I've never seen somebody so like a, a formed character become like, so unpredictable like i didn't know like i don't remember much from my first viewing but mm -hmm. some of the stuff he did when he went in the car and hit that guy oh spoiler alert sorry <clears throat> when he went in the car and then did something to somebody who butted into a line i was like damn <laughs> yeah, it's such a good part eh? but I, I i just like some of it didn't make sense to me i was like that right. scene alone i thought was pulled off just for oh, yeah we'll get to that after but just for laughs i yeah. thought the soundtrack was great Oh yes. From, it comes to about my like central theory about this film. Who's to say that if you are an average person who becomes a superhero, that you'll do the good thing? That mm. was my thing that I brought out of it. Like, yeah, 
it kind of comes to the the center of like being a displaced like superhero fantasy where there's actual real life superheroes like existing so i'm just gonna reset my audio yeah i just don't know i just there was so many questions i was like that just yeah. i don't know maybe because he what's his face who directed this again james, james Gunn. Gunn. he written he wrote this years before and i i think maybe if it was released if it was 2005 2006 i think it was before all the sophisticated and big mainstream <laughs> superhero movies maybe maybe i would like it more but i just thought it was I don't know. Inconsistent. I don't don't know. Oh, (laughs) what do you guys think? I mean, I think it was like a, it seems like a critique of superhero, like fantasies Mm -hmm. more than anything for me. That's why I liked it. Uh, It's like, um, it doesn't apologize for its main characters. They kill, they maim, they do evil to people who don't deserve it. Like, for example, the guy who just keys a car. They go in and they smash the Allegedly face. keys a car. <laughs> yeah, allegedly <laughs> keys a car. And it's sort of raising those moral questions about, okay, so if you're a superhero and you go around, like, killing and maiming and attacking right. people for the smallest things, it was because, like, Rain Wilson's character, the main thing that they got was he seemed to see everything in black and white, um mm. due to like the trauma of uh being abandoned by this girl that obviously mm. saw good in him like there's that scene where she's like i love you why because you're just good um even that relationship didn't make sense to me she <laughs> she called him his hero and so right. she based their relationship on him being her savior which was it just becomes one and now when she gets whatever with that guy um jock who stole my just stole my title and i was like okay what's their relationship i just felt like a lot of the a lot of the movie doesn't make the simple facts about the characters like well known like i didn't know she was a stripper until i listened to the commentary i don't know how (laughs) jack met sarah but i understand what you're saying about the consequences and stuff Hmm. and maybe the world in the movie is more heightened and more twisted and so people can appreciate a man standing up to all the jack but I don't know. It just it makes it look like violence is the noble. Is no, if maybe if they went full tilt, like with zero, like just insanity, maybe it would have made a lot more sense to me. But the fact that they gave him a poignant ending, I was like, it just doesn't get us organically there. So it's like, okay, this movie wants to shock me. It wants to wants to subvert right. expectations, and I'll laugh at the immature gags. Mm-hmm. You know, it wants to t- it wants to tell an alright story, but and then it comes to the ending and i was like oh that okay i think the thing about the ending the ending is quite unexpected like i I felt like it was not your usual ending because the guy doesn't get the girl and um he ends up crying and observing them from afar but i saw the whole thing as a sort of like allegory for breaking up and letting go and Mm. that was like the the ending is actually the conceit of like the entire thing is that um when you break up with someone or when someone breaks up with you, you'll start with like the denial and then you lose logic and you start to just see things in black and white. Either something is good or bad. And then you have to rage, rage against it, rage against the machine. And even when he starts, you know, he saves, he saves her, he saves her from his, from her life. But I don't even think that is exactly. exactly Like what's, what were the consequences for his actions for, for that? I, that's the thing. I don't think um, it's painted as a good or bad thing. In fact, it's kind of like the violence in this film is is like ambig- ambiguous and not really painted as a good or a bad. In fact, like yeah. the characters, the main characters throughout, I thought that <clears throat> the film sort of portrayed them in a negative lens rather than a positive one. They kind of viewed them as a little bit like really misguided. Like the, he bases his whole sort of view on evil on on the little phenomena that he'd see, like he'd see a glowing yeah. face in the, like that whole, the, and then the whole the... connection to his face. I was like, uh, I understand. I, I like, I like your point. Like it makes a lot, a lot more sense that the superhero idea came to Frank for mm. his connection with faith. And I like how, you know, that informed that sort of black and white viewpoint, mm. when it, you know, people do bad things because, you know, devil's was influence and right. that's why his wife was taken you know, for Frank. It, but yeah. I, yeah. Cause that whole spiritual component it was unclear sometimes whether it was real or whether fully it was unclear. imagined. Yeah, <laughs> um, I, I don't know if it was. I, it was fully unclear. And then when the TV show came on, that whole Christian 
TV show where it showed it's a kids TV show where it showed a a guy with um, <laughs> nipples and BDSM or whatever. <laughs> I thought, oh, okay, that's pretty funny. It's sort of, <laughs> I mean, that sort of thing was like, it was basically it was based on his kind of morality about um, he has to be the holy avenger now who dictates right from wrong and punishes mm. people if they do right or wrong, but he has like the wrong ideas sort of thing, and he's sort of deluded in that way. I felt like yeah. he, I felt um, like he was yeah, deluded throughout the entire film. Uh, that was mm. my idea of it. Like mm. he, because he saw, I think he saw the faces like like. He, he seemed to see glowing faces and stuff on people when they didn't exist and he had sort of a delude the deluded like viewpoint of reality anyway i'm talking too much but <laughs> no that's great i, I like it because yeah for me like even when um no but i thought watching the movie he did have a good moral sense of what was good was bad when libby was trying to hit on him even though he wasn't married he was like no 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 you know infidelity i'm, I'm not I'm married, homie, go bake a cake. Yeah. And then, I don't know if we want to talk about that scene, which fully took me out of the film. <laughs> oh, like, because added... who would turn down Ellen Page, eh? Yeah. But what did it add? Like, it added nothing. <laughs> like, what did that add? I think, well, from the director's point of view, I think it was ca- trying to illustrate, like, I know we've got our own morals and stuff, uh, mm. if we've got different viewpoints, if we're Christian or, or other religions or atheists, but I think what James Gunn was trying to um, uh, illustrate was uh, that um, he had a sort of slavish um, uh, kind of de- devotion to his idea of his wife that he still she still loves him and he's going to be with her and and no matter what happens he's going to all that kind of stuff um i i watched uh i listened to the commentary just because because i watched the film beginning of the week and it didn't sit well with me so i watched the film with the commentary and james gunn calls it straight up rape yeah it is (laughs) it is he called it rape and you know it's it's there because it's not okay, and I'm not angry. Guns trying to see, you know, what he can get away with. Mm. I'm yeah. like, if 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 it was if it was gonna add something to the film, I would have made more sense. But if I was being honest, I watched it. I was just numb by it. It's not story anymore. It's just an excuse for a director to put something in the film. Right. I felt um, like it was this like a central <clears throat> point of the film, though. That was what I would say about it. Really? Is that yeah? Is about um. It was showing how reprehensible Ellen Page's character was, and that whatever she wanted, she'd kind of get it. Um, and that she's kind of deluded about, you know, crime is out there and crime is real bad and stuff. But um, and like violence is okay, but this is uh, violence is not okay. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm getting mixed up. But I think it was just trying to illustrate like the central thing of um, his devotion. Yeah. Yeah, because her, no, I agree. Because her sh- her story is the subplot, and right. what she's trying to offer to his main story, and he's been so straightforward from that point until that point actually. Mm. So everything that she's tried to as a subplot, trying to add onto his kill this guy, um, let's have intercourse, all that stuff. He's been a straight arrow. He's been you know I'm not gonna cheat on my wife who broke up with me. Mm. No, I agree with what you're saying. Like what she was. Um, you know, her character yeah. was so... Plus, her character was so one-note, too. Like, she didn't make any development. And spoiler alert, when she died, that came out of nowhere. I was like, okay. As the bullet wound? That was... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was so unexpected. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. real, that was really good physical... Um, uh, uh, what's it called the, when they do the physical effects Gag? and stuff? Like, the, you know, the actual... The face and stuff. Oh, and the, ex- the splatters and everything. You could see that um, James Gunn had, a like, a history in, yeah, in splatter yeah. films. And, but um, I, I would say my last point about this before I let Tom and Ravi talk... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, is, that, um, yeah. He, um, is that... Is uh, that Rain Wilson's character had to find someone more absurdly deluded than him to see right. the error of his yeah, ways. Right. That was my yeah. thought about it, is that Absolutely. he's like, the only person he was like confused by uh, this set of morals was her because she was even more deluded mm. about morality yeah. than he was. And then he had to go yeah. back and go, wait, no, you don't kill like that, blah, blah, blah. Mm. When, when he's actually enacting these sorts of deeds himself to a lesser extent, but still, yeah. yeah. So I felt that I was important wrote, to his goal. Yeah, I wrote that down too. I agree. Mm. Absolutely. 
uh tom did you um yeah i wow ravi it was a nipple one minute in and i was like <laughs> yeah, i know how this movie's gonna okay. turn out <laughs> this film is rude for full, yeah. for full disclosure yeah. i did not know that it was gonna be <laughs> that I, I knew it was an r-rated movie going into it i mean like the scenes like that's the preview that i've seen from collided was was kind of you know, it was it was going to be a dark movie. I didn't yeah. know it was going to be that <laughs> that kind of extreme in terms of yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, but I actually I I quite enjoyed it. Eh? I I felt I thought the movie wasn't taking itself too seriously because there were like little holes and stuff that didn't make sense, and I thought that it was like fine <laughs> that it just worked that way. Kind of like how like they went and bought some guns, and then they were suddenly good at guns, and he took out like a <laughs> like a whole gang. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah just like little things like that like he got shot and then he carried his wife away somehow with his shot arm it's like yeah True, uh, it was yeah, just like think of that. random stuff like that uh and so yeah. i thought like just like pushing those to the back of the mind i think that was probably why i didn't take it too serious i think like the comic book effects kind of helped with that and i was like it's it's yeah. not a serious movie um well even the comic but yeah, book I effects yeah i didn't pick up on the the like uh serious stuff that you guys had that discussion of just now so i was like oh interesting i wasn't thinking that deep i was i was just sort of like very surface level liking like random random dumb stuff that they do or say and be like haha that's funny like haha why does she want to kill him haha <laughs> and i didn't think anything of it so it was it's good to hear that <laughs> the comic book effects were like further accentuated his like deluded sense of i'm doing the right thing Ow, <clears throat> bang kind of thing yeah. like it was sort of like sarcastic right. i felt like it was like mm. like he's a superhero if he's doing that stuff yeah 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 but then you're kind of in your mind you're like no you're not you're not doing right. the right thing you know <laughs> that's what i felt the whole time i didn't right i i started to like it was at the 30 minute point where it's like i started to realize i'm not supposed to condone these actions am i <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Ravi, what did um, you think? But yeah, no. <laughs> um, well, first of the bat, Frank Darbo or um Rain Rain Wilson's character, he is not your typical superhero or like visual anti. Um this is a guy that's gone through a breakup. And like you, you kind of the, the the way that the film kind of portrays him or the way James Gunn writes him, he's like this um I don't know, he feels like he, if this movie, I would kind of describe it as like being more like a Netflix kind of defenders type of film because it's quite d- dark and gory. Like I wouldn't say he's kind of like a Daredevil <laughs> character because Daredevil knows between right and wrong, but like he's <clears throat> he's a visual anti. Um, he's not your typical hero. And uh, the the things there, there's so many little things I like about this film. Like like when when he first decides to be the Crimson Bolt that. Uh, like he wants to be a superhero. Um, <laughs> he like he has this little tape recorder scene where he's like day night one of fighting crime and right. like you don't you don't see that on a normal <laughs> superhero movie like he's like hiding behind the trash like the <laughs> like the dumpster like looking for crime to fight and like the second night he doesn't find it and he goes and he hears something he's like oh it comes back he's like oh it was just a box moving by the wind like little things like says, that yeah. and then he says i'll go pick it up after this <laughs> <laughs> later i'm not gonna leave it there <laughs> Well, like this is not your this is not your typical superhero. Like, like he's not even a, he's not even like a Peter Parker kind of character who's you know gone through like extreme. This is a guy that's kind of as you guys have seen, he's it's, he's quite attached to um, Liv Tyler's character Sierra. i um, gone through this massive uh, like gone through this breakup, but in a sense, like he's trying to figure out what to do or how to respond or how to react, and like he kind of gets prompted by the Holy Avenger, who's played by Nathan Fillion, and that little kids i don't even i don't even know if it's a kids tv show to be honest it, uh some of the things that's um that's mentioned in there as you guys said it's quite yeah it's quite adult like um but yeah he's not your average superhero and the way he kind of he's i feel like he's trying to feel out of being like a superhero in this whole like or visual anti in this whole film like he's trying to figure out what it what is right and wrong and like as you guys said he's, he's he thinks it's good what he's doing is good but in, in a sense it's not really he's just he's addressing like the stereotype people who he thinks might be bad like the like the guy that he um tries to take take down the first scene who is like a drug dealer in a sense but mm-hmm. he has like no like no kind of like um like he, he has intention but he has no kind of practicality he's like oh yeah i'm just gonna jump this just jump on this guy and um then i'll stop crime and <laughs> then he figured out oh no i actually need a weapon now uh, but like I felt like it was, it was like like you said, Jill, this is kind of like that um, like the kick 
behind films, okay, but films where um where he's trying to feel it out as really like like you know um, grounded as opposed to being like this super special fix based film. Um, I liked it, and 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 the essence. I also liked the some of the transitions. I, I'm not, I don't know what James Gunn talked about in the commentary, but like you do see like he the, some of the transition shots are just <clears throat> it like has this kind of color red or yellow, and then it transitions. There um, was one guys... that I noticed with the yellow. Yeah. With the yellow, I think there was one with the red he's, as well. He's, okay. Yeah, a lot of that um, was from what he said on the commentary. His transitions was more like. Um, the darker the transition, the more clouded his um, vision was of what he was doing and stuff like that. Ah, the real artiste. The real artiste. <laughs> <laughs> you got to add some artistry in there somewhere. What? Right. <laughs> Sorry. What's interesting is uh, like the things that you said you didn't pick up on, um, and you've like, you've seen it twice, but you didn't like pick up that like she was a stripper and stuff like that. Um, I I don't know. I. I Maybe because I wasn't taking it too seriously, like there didn't need to be the explanation to me. So when it was like he was going to her work and it was the drug dealer yeah. strip club, I was just like, oh yeah, she's a stripper. Uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't like think too deeply about it. Maybe it was just because of how light I like, was if, taking the movie. Because yeah. she was coming out of that. That was the first time you see her with him. Yeah. Could it just sure. be one of those like, oh, she probably just went and visited him or like, probably because we see him first, Jock. Yeah, and then we see her with him, and then you're supposed to connect the thoughts of like, okay, um, he came to see her. She's not here, so she's now with him. But I, like, what I would have wanted was more of the relationship between Sarah and Frank. Right. I don't. I don't think yeah. there was much. I'm just thinking of what I would have done to make it a better film. Yeah, right. it had little yeah. parts of the relationship in like the drawings, and that like was, in yeah. like the, the tiny cool. flashbacks. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. I did feel what I got from it was that um, I think they were trying to sell the idea that the relationship between Frank and Sarah was like an illusion. Like the reason why Frank did all these things for Sarah, he was misguided in his whole attempt to try and save Sarah because um, they're like, he doesn't have a relationship with her anymore. It doesn't, it's not there. Like there's no poignant kind of you're the one for me moments with her because right. she's she's not the one for him sort of thing right so it's just like he's going, thing, i need to save I sarah i need to save sarah to the point yeah. where it's like everything that's happening around you like doesn't matter because of this right. fake idea i need to get my relationship back when there wasn't anything there to begin with yeah. and it kind and of the- like reflected oh sorry you can no no you go brother I kind of reflected on the character of Frank Darbo because he, like, like I said, he's not like your average superhero. He and like e- e- even the way he describes himself when he's kind of praying and stuff, he's like, "Look at me, people laugh at me. Why am I this way?" People and like you see that in the flashbacks, like he's not your average guy. And and with Sarah, like he kind of sees that as be- being his, like, kind of giving identity to himself in a sense, where like he's like this low life guy. I don't know if low life's the right word, but he's this guy that you know that doesn't really have much going on. He's working in this job that he's doesn't really like, doesn't really have friends. He's just this lonely guy. And so Sarah mm. was kind of the saving grace in a sense for him. And so now that she's gone, he's like, Oh, I need to go back to her. or I need to get her back because that that's, she, she kind of forms my identity of who I am because she calls him a hero or sees him as this yep. special person. Uh, that's why I said last time when she, the relationship was built on him. Well, what we learn later on is that Sarah is a recovering drug addict and or yes. alcoholic, one of those two, I don't know. Mm. And that she's trying to turn her life around and that she, you know, we know that she thought Frank of her of as her hero, you know, just only because he's a good guy, like and then right. the like this weird guy who looks at the world differently than other guys. She mm. calls him a good guy. Like he he's a good guy. Sure. But Frank, he's never given the time of day by the opposite six and he's put into this role of a hero and that's that's not a good foundation to build a long lasting relationship on yeah. but i don't know about you guys um i felt that was the point of it yeah <laughs> the only time i ever felt that she needed him or that she's given him this unfair responsibility was when she was with the sister when she was fighting for him to be like, every yeah. other interaction she True. was either like pushing him away or right yeah. uh, obviously she didn't know she needed the help when she was high and drug addict but she oh man this sounds bad but she she went to jock like 
Yeah. Oh, okay, that's sad. But obviously, well, she didn't know what Jock was going to do. Yeah, no, yeah. she she did that, and I think it was just the uh, underscoring that whole idea that um, she was she went of her own volition, and right. and Rain the super I mean the Crimson Bolt um, invented himself all over this kind of false idea that no, she right. didn't want to go, sort of thing. But all this time, she actually she went over. She walked into the car. She she enjoyed yeah. it, you know. And she yeah. went. She mm. wanted to, re- and that's kind of underscored by the ending. She want she want she wanted to leave all along. She only stayed mm. because he mm. saved her. But she just yeah. stayed for like a month and went. Oh, thank you, and then left because mm. she had already had enough of the relationship by the film's beginning. Yeah, right. and I think it was it was like kind of key what the sister said. Um, like when that before she like felt the need to um like defend frank the sister was telling her that like she's just like got off drugs um maybe don't go into something don't rush into something so big so quickly and she's like no this is like she's gone from clinging to drugs to clinging to this dude and i I think that kind of explained like the relationship and then i think as time goes on she discovers no she didn't really want that um that Mm. was just her coming off of her drugs right wow I do yeah. kind of want to like address a little elephant, a little elephant in the room with this movie. We all come from church backgrounds. Uh, oh. <laughs> we kind of met through oh, the church. This whole discussion. <laughs> <laughs> this film uh, was one of the more kind of blatant uh, anti-Christian films I've no, seen in a long time. Right. I feel <laughs> um, <laughs> like the whole there was a the, <clears throat> one of the big themes of the film is that. Um, he's a Christian and he sees this Christian TV show where there's a Christian superhero that upholds values that the director clearly thinks are outdated, like a, a, like a, like an improper kind of ranking of values, kind of like, um, it's so, uh, you slept with blah, blah, blah. You, you cheated. You deserve, (laughs) you deserve to get clonked in the head sort of thing. And I think he was making fun of like that, um, that kind of um, what he views as outdated Christian um, morals um, Mm. throughout the film, even to the point where he gets touched on the brain by God um, was a little bit absurd. And it had like tentacles and stuff. And uh, yeah, it was was sacrilegious. I could, yeah, I mean, that's the point where my personal viewpoint kind of diverges with the directors and makes this, you know, uh, a little uh a little he's poking fun at me basically but um right yeah i just thought i would address that elephant in the room uh mm. it, that was a pretty like central thrust of the film and if you yeah. if that doesn't jive with you you just won't enjoy this movie um absolutely it, yeah. Oh, yeah that's interesting i didn't pick up on any of those themes <laughs> <laughs> i was just like oh yeah oh yep just just a movie yeah. Oh. I mean that's why I think that's why I enjoyed it. I mean enjoyed it to a certain extent. I still think that's some uh, rather sacrilegious film, but right. um I I do think that it addressed it, it I I got the message underneath the yeah, me too. Like cuz it was like at the beginning I was like this is is this going to be a quirky for the sake of quirky empty hollow film. <laughs> and at the end I, I was like nope, there is a clear message here. <laughs> there yeah. is a clear message he's trying to portray. It's about grief, loss, black and white mor- morality, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I was drawing, I was drawing parallels to, um, and like he talked about it in his commentary, and some people talked about it in their own, um, uh, what's it called? The what are those people or the crew talked about it in their uh, interviews about some of them being Christian and um, didn't feel right. Um, filming that stuff, but they still filmed it because they were on the contract and the producer could have fired them here, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, for me, I, I I read, I it came clear the message. Um, I drew parallels to, yeah, um, I don't know, um, when somebody is, uh, you know, using their faith to do some bad things, I drew parallels to, like, um, you know, the some bombers and stuff like that. And I know that wasn't the extent of what he wanted us to feel in the movie. Right. I just, mm-hmm. like, when you when you present something like this and the underlying messages, stuff like that, you know, people's minds can just take it wherever they want. And that's where yeah. I, my mind I was like, man, this guy's okay. I don't, I, I don't believe that Frank, it's hard to say, I, I don't believe he was Christian in a sense. I just feel like, you know, because it, like, it's, it goes back to the message of, I believe, you know, everyone prays. But it's just it's a matter of who they're praying to. Like all of, a lot of his like 
and like i feel like because all his visions so-called visions were quite uh, all seem to be quite like delusional like the one where he sees jesus sitting he's like i saw jesus sitting uh sitting on my on wall, wall when i was like young and he's he he like it's okay hey, just don't worry about okay. it I don't know why people make such a big deal. Like, like a lot of them were quite delusional. Like the way when he sees, like, the, I don't think he was Christian in a sense, but like because of this illusion, because of like how he's feeling and stuff, that kind of he goes, "Oh, God must be telling me to do this," um, in a sense, because like you know, like because yeah, yeah. he could have been like schizophrenic, having hallucinations, right? I, I, th- yeah, I feel I th- like that that implication was there that he had some sort of like schizophrenia or something yeah. where he and was saying seeing he things. like had it for his entire life so. yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 he's like this one and he literally the the roof caves open and he sees god and then he sees a, a logo right and i found <laughs> i found it was quite telling when he was like praying to god and he's like okay did you just say throw it all away throw my stuff away or is that me thinking of throw it all away if you don't want right. me to throw it away then maybe give me a sign maybe make something float it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's like putting these kind of yeah. weird assumptions on how god works and absolutely all this yeah yeah so um, as a christian i felt you're right like in, in the fact that um when you trust in god uh it it doesn't really work I think in the way of like seeing phenomena in every day. Okay, God, if if you're real, then make this can mm. float above me, sort of thing. Uh, right. It was, yeah. So it was, I felt it was like like a, Christ, a criticism of that kind of Christianity and stuff. Yeah, I, I I do agree in a sense that it was it was mockery, um, or like you know just playing on like you know the idea of Christianity. But um, I I don't know I didn't, I didn't feel that he was Christian in a sense, but like maybe because based on his delusion, because he's quite a I don't know he's quite an empty character. His two most significant events of his life was when he got married to Sarah and when he told the cop that the burglar ran into the store. So he seems like quite a you know like he doesn't seem like a guy that's got a lot going on from which bases on what a lot of his delusions. He kind of feels like a Walter Mitty kind of character where like he kind of lives a lot of his stuff in his head if you've seen the secret life of ultimate he does a lot of things he doesn't do that much but he does he kind of imagines himself doing these things and i feel like with um frank darbo because of how because of the way he was written he was a character that is you know it's deluded and because his life was so basic and simple but, um, yeah. i think for me if <clears throat> maybe if there was more scenes like that scene where he imagined spiking that guy's face um in the beginning maybe if there's more scenes like that that um like like water midi sort of thing maybe if um maybe if those more promptings like that for him like and his anger just kept building and building and like and then it's just sparked him hitting somebody in the face maybe that um situation and where someone butting in the line and then that's when he he's like oh yeah sweet you're, uh, i can you're do saying this to give him more of stuff. a reason to be angry huh you're saying to give him more of a reason to be angry sort of thing uh or like push some... him towards the, the vigilante stuff yeah right i can see that like maybe like more of those water media imaginations with somebody like if people were treating him like trash and the way he put it like nobody respected him or that scene where his wife told him to get out and he should have done a stop like if there were more stuff like that hmm. and then that hope and then he finally has a prompting from from god because that's how that's how god prompts people with that whole slittery thing and cut your head open oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> let's just say that's non-canon <laughs> i did um, watch a lot of the behind the scenes stuff and the practicals for it, like the way they did it because obviously it was a low budget film but like i think they had like a um like they used like these metal things Right. So they could get the visuals of rain, but then they had like a like a I don't know like a dummy where they did the visuals for it, and even even like things like um, but like there there was some real things like when when they set the man on when, when he set the man on fire towards the end of the film that was that was real. Okay. Um, James Gunn actually, he's like, oh, I never 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 set a man on fire before, but uh, yeah, we 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 just we we thought we'd do it and hope hope he didn't die. With the and suit, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I think we should maybe go to our ratings. Um now our yes. overall impressions of the film um who wants to start julius what is I'll your get over and done overall impression because i feel yeah I, i'm i'm probably the <laughs> odd one out um yeah for me it was it was a jarring film to be honest 
for, for me, like one minute of drama, then offbeat comedy, then animated opening, and it just kept jumping from them. For me, I don't know. It just I um from what I remember, I remember disliking it a lot. But what rewatching it, there's there are some really cool stuff. Rain Wilson's character is really likable. Um, Alan Page is great in anything she is in, even if the character is so one note. Um, but for me, there's just too many negatives. Like, hmm. I think for me, the um, what will, what will, um, what's the word? You can um, what will like um, what sums it up for me is that scene in the beginning where um, he's eating eggs on the table with Jock, and the camera is supposed to be static. But the camera is shaking, like it's obvious. Oh. It's, it's like, that and that to me is, <laughs> sums up the whole film. It's it's <laughs> just it's not well done. <laughs> <laughs> if I was to give it a rating, I'd probably give it a two out of ten. Nice, nice, wow. fair enough. Birds of prey to you? <laughs> no, that's one. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. This one at least had good bits. So. Tom, uh, yeah, what's your I, 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 I. I enjoyed it for what I took it as, uh, which was like not really a serious movie. Um, I thought it was like there are parts where I'd get a bit bored, uh, and then they just senselessly like beat someone up and be like, ah, "It's funny, oh, good times." Why why they smack that dude with a wrench? Oh. and then yeah, and then I'd be like watching it again. Um, yeah, so for me, I thought it was I thought it was okay. Just surprise little like nudity scenes and. Like dumb stuff, like when he was afraid of going to prison, and <laughs> like an actual scene of him and like a fat dude yep. behind him. And I was really? like, oh, and there was Blue like, a, scenes. yeah, like lol shocks. Just like, ah, <laughs> oh wow, wasn't expecting to see that today, uh, but I have. Thanks, Ravi. Um, <laughs> thanks, Jessica. So yeah, thanks. I I don't know. I think I'd give it about about a five. Um, so even though I I thought it was funny, it was like. Yeah, a, a little bit pointless, you'd say. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a good like pointless. Maybe like if I was having a massive meal and wanted some background noise. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I do that a lot with YouTube. So yeah, it's, it's sort of fit in that here. But Although I, some scenes would probably be not very suited for a meal, uh, to be honest. Uh, I couldn't eat with anything, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's yeah my uh, my thoughts on it. Yeah. It's fair, Ravi. Um, yeah, so James Gunn film. Um, it was interesting to see what you know. I always think it's quite interesting to to watch some of the stuff that the Marvel directors that were they went on to do great things um, did before. I never had seen a James Gunn movie. Um, like I said, came across this movie um, a while back. Was interested to see um, what James Gunn would do in it. Um, there, yeah, like like I said, there was there was things I liked about it, like like the grounded. Um, you know, the basis of Frank Darbo's character and him wanting to become a vigil anti was quite quite cool. Seeing seeing things that normally you wouldn't get in a in a big blockbuster superhero film, like someone like hiding behind a trash can talking to himself in a recorder that you don't you won't get um, in a big because there's no time for that. Um, but yeah, like um, uh, like 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 in what Tom said, I didn't. I've I've only seen it once, like one and a half times, if that counts, um, and. I, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! I watched it the second time to get some critical, critical um, analysis. But yeah, no, um, I, I think it was good. Good. I like, I like some of the editing. I like the soundtrack. I like, um, you know, Rain Wilson's character. I can see why he was great as Dwight Schrute. But um, my, my rating for this movie again, I, was, I, I agree with Tom. I think it's a five. I think it's better than some superhero movies, um, mm. out there that they had like bigger actors that that were flops, like you know things like Daredevil and stuff like that, which I haven't seen. But I, I would assume that's. It's better than those, so mm. I'll give it a five. Yeah, five out of ten. Yeah. Five out of ten. Wait, Daredevil the movie, right? Daredevil the movie. <laughs> okay, yeah. good. Yeah. If you think that Daredevil the movie where Colin Farrell, <laughs> I think, or Colin Farrell, whoever, says, "Look, Bullseye is better than this movie," then you, then, yeah, that, that's just dumb. <laughs> that good, film good. is dreadful. <laughs> Benny. Um. Okay. Super. Uh. I started out this for the first 30 minutes of this thinking it's quirky for the sake of quirky. It has no depth to it. Uh, I don't like Rain Wilson in this main role. I think it's glorifying some sort of like in lifestyle, whatever. But then it became clear to me later on that it's sort of like a, 
I've always had this sort of weird feeling with superhero movies where um, how do these arbitrary single people know what's good, what's right, and what's wrong? How do they know who to punish, who to lock up, you know? Um, and I thought it saw this as sort of like a sociopathy as superhero movie um, where it's like we... And because of his, like, breakup, because of losing... He was quite selfish in losing his girl his wife that he would make up a code of morals just to to just to kind of justify this endless violence and then he's joined in by others who kind of you know um feed into his psyche and encourage him to do bad things i thought it was quite like an accurate prediction uh prediction depiction of um how someone can just be deluded and um but then by the end i felt like he'd sort of um learned over time to let go um of his um sense of this is right this is absolutely right this is absolutely wrong like this whole kind of uh climax led him to that uh conclusion i i thought it was really funny and i mean it was a little bit sacrilegious and a little bit a little bit um mocking but i really enjoyed it and i felt it was really strong um wow. it was like a really weird wacky anti-superhero movie and i haven't really seen a film like it i'll give this film a 7.5 out of 10 wow <laughs> nice wow Benny. you should see my face wow <laughs> <laughs> it's that is such big. a good movie it was those back. scenes i reckon <laughs> yeah but um <laughs> Rather, oh, yeah. and the brutal and the brutal well, violence when he like whacks somebody with a wrench. This uh, is like satisfying, yeah. but like, I, like I don't think I've seen. Usually, violence is sort of like a plastic sort of blood <clears throat> bloodless affair, but the 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 fact that it was like bloody and almost disturbing, like kind of made you think. Yep, this is what happens if you actually become a superhero. Crap like this happens. Right. And you have to deal with it. Yeah, so. and he like he don't, it doesn't like one hit kill them. It like he like, smacks them and they're like ah, 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 on the ground and stuff. And you're just like, oh. and everyone's like, why did it's you like, do that? Yeah, so everyone's like, like, what's going on? Yeah, it's, it's like messy and, and ugly, and everyone's like, yeah. I just thought that kind of demented nature of it was quite um, telling. Yeah. It's like, well, don't become a superhero because then you have to deal with all of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I just want to say thank you guys for watching it. Like I said, I haven't seen it before, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's good, good to choice, see. Man. Can see what James Gunn did before Guardians of the Galaxy. Can you believe this guy did Guardians of the Galaxy no. after watching that? Would Would you have chosen this movie still if you had seen all of it, Ravi? <laughs> Probably not. My no. my my <laughs> next film of James Gunn, if if anything, I mean, he didn't di- direct it, or uh, but I think he helped with it in a sense. It was his idea was Brightburn. That was going to be my next James Gunn kind of film. I, like I said, he hasn't directed it, but I think he had all input right. in it. So, so no no hint would... on that one then. Yeah. I haven't seen it. Uh, hey, oh, uh, full, oh, full, sorry. Okay. Full disclosure: I did. I had not seen the movie before. Uh, don't like worry, I said, you it don't was, have to... And it was kind of. I, I like the theme of how how we've done films, like some someone like Benny, uh, where he's watched a film that he's never watched before, and it was it was kind of good for me to kind of watch something that's kind of different mm-hmm. to what I'm currently watching. So, nice. yeah. Yeah. don't know. No matter how many times you you preface it with, <laughs> I didn't know, I didn't watch it before, yeah, I, before I went into this. My yeah, hands are clean. We all know your heart. <laughs> I I could clearly see how James Gunn got fired from Disney after this. <laughs> he's very what, blue. Really? Yeah, he's all his jokes and borderline. Right. Um, so now that we're finished with Super, we're going to go on to our next movie recommendation. Tom, what do you have for us? Oh, I I yeah. Know. A little hint earlier in the show when I told you guys to shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this week's movie is The Five Bloods. Yeah. <laughs> Fortnite's movie. Yeah, so we're going we're gonna to be watching this movie. And yes. in a fortnight, we will come back and talk about it. Um yeah and when you say in a fortnight we're yeah. going to be watching this movie inside of fortnight right yeah yeah we're gonna watch it now server. inside of the fortnight the game yeah yeah there's gonna be a, a screening of this movie mm-hmm. yeah yep 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 that is yeah. quite funny how they they premiered the tenet um trailer inside know, of right? fortnite. <laughs> that, was that similar to star wars how they just had this massive thing up here in, in the game or no idea how did that work yeah fortnite was doing heaps of stuff hey they've they've done really well for joining with big i don't think they did a trailer to start in fortnite no they didn't do a trailer they like it was more lightsabers and stuff in it in the uh, yeah i never oh, played the lightsabers. yeah 
Right. I I have. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. But they did like an audio. Just a side note before we before we turn this off. Um, breaking news: Christopher Nolan, under pressure from Warner Brothers, has pushed back Tenet's release to the thirty first of so. July instead oh. of the seventeenth. I hate wow. Warner Brothers now. I thought okay. they were going to push it back further, like way further. Than- yeah, yeah. I was imagine. That's if yeah, they were going to push it back sure. further, they would have pushed it back to replace Wonder Woman in August. But they wanted to keep Wonder Woman there. So they just put it like one day away from August. Nice. <laughs> nice. I think Wonder Woman's end of uh, August. So <laughs> it's got a month yeah. to. I mean, Endgame got two billion in four weeks. So, you know. Mm. That's yeah. Endgame. That's, That's Endgame. Trump, though. That's true. <laughs> Yeah, My but, parents um, went and fell asleep in Endgame. Come on. <laughs> Anyone right. bought tickets. Anyway, sorry, that's just sign up. Maybe we can um Yeah. No, that that's cool. Um to to round it off, um we still haven't as of the recording of this podcast, I still haven't got my act together to edit and release the podcasts, but when we do, we will be taking questions from people that you want answered by us about nice. film mm. or our personal lives or anything you <laughs> Or Julius's personal lives. Anyway, um, uh, very yeah. Personal. That's the end of our show. Uh, anyone want to say any closing thoughts? Well, I had a shower this morning, and I and I I was checking underneath my. Sorry. Okay. Goodbye, everyone. Um, bye. So I just see want to talk about this little rash I have in the side oh, of my. Yeah. Sorry. Bye. Okay. Tom, you would like to hear about Tom? Stop the bye. 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 Turn it off now. <laughs> 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 huh, that's it.